Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. On this episode, we're going to review the trailer to Season 3 of The Mandalorian. We've been waiting for this for more than a couple of years. It's been way too long. Way too long. Crazy. Uh, This is now one of our favorite Star Wars properties. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, and we've been anticipating Season 3. We had a little, what some are calling Season 2.5, teaser with a couple, <laughs> couple of Mandalorian episodes tucked into the Book, the Book of, of Boba, Boba Fett. Which were great. They were, they were fantastic. They were, they, were, they were the best part of that <laughs> right. whole season. They were. <laughs> so what do we see with Not the much. season three trailer? A little. I yeah. mean, you know, it's a, again, you talk about packing content into a brief it's amount dense. of time. Well, yeah. okay, dense. so the first thing I noticed that I'm excited about mm-hmm. is that they're, they're going to get more into the lore of the Mandalorians because... Yes. It seemed from the preview again, you know, there's spoilers here, but it is just a preview. So there's a lot of speculation here, but it seems like uh, from what we hear that they're going to be trying to put together the society of the Mandalorians again. Right. So they're going to go back to the planet and they're, you know, I guess they're vying now. There's going to be two sects of Mandalorians that are going to be more than two. More than two. You're right. There's clans. Right. So. The, the, the Mandalorians uh, and Star Wars are an example of exactly what sequels should be, right? We have uh, the original Star Wars universe from you know, movies four, five, and six. You know, George Lucas did wonderful world building uh, for those those movies. One, two, and three. Also, I think they expanded the world bu- world building mm-hmm. of the Star Wars yeah. you know galaxy. The movies themselves had problems, but the world building was actually really, really good. Uh, seven, eight, and nine. We won't even talk about them. They were horrible and abomination. Absolutely. But um, the best episodes, the best movies, the best you know uh, parts of the Star Wars franchise are when they give us something somewhat familiar, but then explore an aspect of the Star Wars universe and do deeper backstory, deeper world building, mm-hmm. expand the world. The you know, Mandalore was absolutely ripe for that. You know, all we had started with Boba Fett and some armor that was repurposed from it was supposed to be an elite uh uh stormtrooper. Yeah, white, right? Yeah, white. yeah, the original version and of then Boba that, Fett. that that one prop yeah. got spun off into a whole culture and world yeah. and backstory of it's its a great own. design. Well I mean, yeah, and that's what when people watched Return of the Jedi. Yeah. They saw that character. Most of us saw Boba Fett and were and he was compelling. There was something about that yes. the, the way that armor looked and the way that, that character behaved it's and cool. the, the fact that he's cool. a bounty hunter. Bounty hunter and, and remember Ig was there too. Was it Ig eighty eight? One one? It was some Ig. Um, I love well, it. yeah, I mean, his first yeah. appearance was in egg, egg, was egg. in The Empire Strikes Back as a bounty hunter, but then he shows up in in uh, Jabba the Hutt's lair, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, and that that's when I, I think a lot of people really were like, "Wow, this character is cool as as hell." Yeah, and it's and you're right, Steve. It sp- it spins out into it, a lot of it was fan driven, by the yeah. way. It spins out into like this this whole thing about the Mandalorians and the armor and you know their backstory of the planet and that you know all of this stuff happens and now you know Star Wars one of the best decisions they made from a writing perspective and I totally agree with what you said Steve is you got to take these little seeds that have already been planted and then follow them and, yeah. and see where you could take them you know, I'm not saying you shouldn't plant new seeds too because I want to see brand new That's, stuff you as need well. one new branches and everything. absolutely so. The and the Mandalorian backstory has been fleshed out in the cartoons, most of all, up until you know the Mandalorian, uh, with Star Wars, uh, the, the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. and Star Wars Rebels. Uh, and, was there a lot there in there? Oh yeah, totally. So you go to Mandalore in Rebels, yeah, and man. that's when the, gotta watch that the, the the dark saber is introduced there. The yeah, dark saber. You knew about it when yeah, it you, showed up. Like, what yeah, the hell is that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's all it's all from from Rebels, you know, where um, you learn that yeah, there's different Mandalorian clans. They fight with each other. That's all canon. That's all it's canon. all canon. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, they had differences of opinion about whether they should join the empire or not. Eventually those that pushed back against the empire, um, caused the empire to just carpet bomb the planet. Yeah. They were scattered throughout the galaxy. Well, I hate when that happens. Right. And now, so now here we are, the empire has fallen. The, the, the wandering Mandalorians, the remnants of the clans are, you know, this brings us to season three. It's like, well, mm-hmm. what are we going to do? You know, and you can hear Mandalor- Mando, you know, Din Djarin say, who are we? What are we going to do? You know, we're it, scattered. But it, but it seems like because, you know, he he's giving the voiceover. You're hearing the main character, yeah. Din Djarin, yeah. who is Mando, just to make yeah. that clear. 
he's giving this speech, it seems, to other Mandalorians and basically asking them the question, like, who are we? What are we? You know, what are we going to be? Mm-hmm. And that makes me think that he might be vying as, yeah, well, as that's leader. The, that's the question. So there's yeah. a lot of unanswered questions that are now going to be picked up, you know, with season three. At, at the end of season two, Din Djarin had the Black Saber. And, and Bo-Katan was very upset about that because she wanted to win it from uh, Moff Love. Gideon. But, but Din Djarin did, and she can't get the sword unless she defeats its owner, which mm-hmm. is right. you know, Mando. But with uh, that sword, he can lay claim to... Uh, sort of. I mean, right? again, it's to, all politics. So she, she actually comes from a noble family, in, you know, right? So she actually has an independent claim to the throne. So if she had the sword, that would be the icing on the cake. If she cake, had the sword, that would it. clinch it. She already actually failed once to take to unite the clans in the in the, in the uh, Star Wars Rebels cartoon. Okay. Um, so she's, you know, here we are, you know, a number of years later. For, uh, this is probably, you know, what, 10, 15 years later to that series. And um, she wants to make another bid to, to unite the yeah. clans. The sword would be the icing on the cake. So now, ah. where's the who has the sword? Does Din Djarin still have it? How much does Katan want the sword? What you is know? she willing to do? What is she willing it, yeah. to get it? Or maybe is she going to try to make a bid for the throne without the sword? Because again, it's all legend and tradition. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, you know, it's written in stone, but it, it would be politically favorable. So that all has to play itself out. But then there are other clans out there as well. We know there's going to be some Mandalorian on Mandalorian fighting from some brief scenes that we get yep. in in the trailer. So it's not going to be a smooth, you know, kumbaya, let's all get together and, and reform. Oh, and Mandalore. the other thing is, I mean, and we're not sure what's going on, but they do show four Jedi. And they and I am yeah. certain that they're Jedi. No, they're 100% Jedi. Now, Steve, you suspect that, that this was a flashback. Yeah, I think... And others have said that this is probably a flashback. It's one very subtle clue is that the scene is from a very low angle. It's probably from Grogu's perspective. So it could be his memory of when he was rescued from the Jedi Temple during Order 66. Right. So who's and, coming through the door, though? Someone with yeah, a lightsaber is coming, probably, melting their way probably to the, Darth the door. Yeah. Uh, if that's the case, if it's, I mean, if this is not a flashback, but it's happening in current time, those would have to be Luke's. Jedi, yeah, and then who knows what's happening? Maybe they're coming for maybe some Sith, you know, or or Inquisitor or whatever is coming for Grogu and they're protecting him. So I, we don't know, but I think not, it's probably a flashback. It probably it would be my is, guess, but, but I but personally hope it isn't because I would yeah. really like to see like where the Jedi go from here. Right? We have Luke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You but know, that's a I, lot to pack into this season, though. You know what I mean? Like, a, so there's two major plot lines that we can tell from the the uh, the trailer. The, the reuniting of Mandalore and the power struggle that ensues. But also we get the the return of the remnants of the Empire. There's literally the remnant, you know, that Moff Gideon is part of. Uh, and that's going to turn into something, probably the First Order, you know. But can we just cut the shit here? Can mm-hmm. we cut the shit? Where's the Luke Skywalker TV show? Well, that no, no, we're talking issue. about it now. No, because <laughs> no, you got to think about it. Like we we've seen him multiple times in yeah. the Mandalorian. The technology has gotten better. They might they, be building to it, as you say. I think when the when the tech, when the technology gets there, they might just like you know come with a couple of years. Who knows? It might they might be at the point where like all right, we're doing a full on. I mean, could yeah. you imagine? Be, if yes, they, if they ima- pulled it can. off, it could be awesome. Those it, those have all been the best Mandalorian episodes. How expensive would that be? It might be just cost prohibitive at this point. It gets it gets it gets better and less. expensive expensive every year right, that goes yeah. by but right right now now we might not be we might not be there wait but, but hold on but i gotta say this because this is important you know mark hamill is not getting any younger and mm-hmm. if they want him to voice it like they should get yeah. him to do it now like yeah, let's but, do yeah, it yeah. now i hear you but if it's 10 million an episode, but even if, even if it's a luke skywalker series it could there could still be some secondary characters that get developed sure that of take course. a lot of screen you, time so it's not going to be 100 percent cg they have to do that luke. yeah I, Anyway, back to the movie. I could watch Luke go to the bathroom, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, we we I, I, recently I rewatched the last episode of Mandalorian season two when Luke shows up, takes out all of the the dark ah. um, soldiers, you, and it was just an amazing ah, episode. Oh God. God. Amazing, so amazing good. Episode. I mean, when that happened, when I saw that episode, I I jumped out of my seat. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't jump when out you, of my seat for much. That was wonderful. You realize that's Luke. It is an epic moment. That's that's payoff, right? You build you build that kind of legend and tension and everything. And then you get that massive payoff. But it's, it's the, be and it was super the, competent Luke. The, I mean, he, yeah, he, he peak, knew peak his, Luke. The star Luke. Wars universe has an incredible amount of unspent capital. Yeah. Luke Skywalker after 
the Return of the Jedi is a massive yes. unspent piece of capital that they have. Yep. And there is literally no reason why they that they shouldn't explore what happens to Luke after mm -hmm. this. Yeah, they need to. It's like there's there's twenty years, thirty years of right, his yeah. life that we could delve into. And even if you just get a look of like, at the worst case, get a look of like after if you have to, that would be okay. I'd be okay with that if the if the writing was still good in the acting. And you could and CG act. tweak it to make maybe. It I don't I don't need to have what we saw if that's not practical. Then I could deal with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I just you're right. It's it's he's there. They need to utilize. But him. the book of Boba Fett, you know, episodes that had Luke in it. It was so good. It was way, it was. way above the waterline. Yeah. And it's, and Bob, that it was, was, it was so th good. Those, those went public two years ago. They probably shot them over three years ago. Mm -hmm. In three years, the technology, I'm yeah, telling where's you, it now? has gotten way better than yeah, what we where's saw. Where is it now? So getting back to yes, sorry. this episode, that's all right. <laughs> Uh, so the, the second major plot line is the, the return of some remnant of the Empire, probably the First Order. We get hints yeah. at that as well. Jesus we Christ. know that the you know that there's the, the cloners are at, at work again. Again, they, they had to they wanted some blood from Grogu for some cloning program. We don't know if this connects to the Emperor. Maybe they're keeping the Emperor alive. Well, we see Dr. But, Pershing in Cor yeah. Coruscant. We see him there. Yeah, so yeah. what's he he's the one yeah, that, he, that and he, he, and he has blood. He has the, yeah, the mark of the cloners yeah, on his yeah. shoulder, and he he has the blood from Grogu. So we need to that plot line is going to get developed more in the third season. And as Grogu well. himself, so we see him yeah. using the Force well, right? Yeah. He he Force throws that creature. We don't know what kind of creature in his, it was in his little redesigned little bassinet, upgrade, floaty upgraded, thing. Upgraded but he also it. has I don't know how to describe. It. He him, has man. almost like a regal look on his face yeah. as he comes out yeah, of that he's cave. Very, very like he's maturing. Yeah, yeah, he's maturing. But you guys have completely forgotten the best little scene from that entire trailer. What? The droid bar. It showed a bar. <laughs> yeah, what the hell was that? It showed a bar populated just by droids, and it was wonderful. I can't wait what, to see what happens. I want to know what's going on. It looked like right, a bar, but doing? it might not be a bar. We don't know what it is. It yet. looked like a bar, man. They're not allowed in the regular bar, so they got to go somewhere right. where their owners are in the bar. And what do they do? They what do they do? I mean, do they get little electric shocks? Is it feel good? I don't know what they're doing, but <laughs> I, I want to see that scene. I, yeah, again, there's a lot of um, yeah. unexplored was, little nooks and crannies of the Star Wars universe that you can get into if you if you have good writers that are not afraid to take some chances, that have a good right. vision, that know where they're going, know what they're doing. Uh, Mandalorian, again, the first two seasons were fantastic. The, the trailer to the third season makes me really jazzed to see it. March 1st, it, mm -hmm. it uh, comes out. Favreau and Filoni know what they're, the hell they they're doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They absolutely know what so they're doing. Good. So good. Yeah, we're, we'll definitely be reviewing uh, that season three once, once episode it comes out. by episode review. I would totally do that. It's up yeah. to hey guys, if it were up to me, we would do it. So if you enjoy this episode, <laughs> if you enjoy Star Wars, and who the hell doesn't? And if you don't, I, I can no, I can't forgive you. But <laughs> bottom line is, if you like us, please do support us. You can go to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Alpha Quadrant and Number Six. You can also go to our website, Alpha Quadrant and Number Six dot com, where you can find links to all of our past videos. And this show is also a podcast. And we'll see you next week.